Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 904, 904 that is. And um, today we're going to talk about how your mind works. Um, the title may be a little mis provocative and hope it was, but I want to explain more about that in a moment uh, once I introduce myself and get into the topic at hand. So, hi, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my chat. Or I should say my talk, daily broadcast. I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. Whew, that's, a, that's going to be quite a speech now. Um, I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I am a relationship attraction expert, and I am a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work with women and also uh, what started these talks almost three years ago. Back then, I started what they were called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart, which they're still called, and today we're episode number 904. Yes, the last, last hundred before the end of the, end, the end of the thousand, something like that. Anyway, I'll talk today about how you may talk to yourself, especially around the dating conversation. The main reason this come up is because I've heard from a few women recently about things like, all oh, the good ones are taken, or there's no good men. Or I keep dating, they keep dating losers, that sort of framing. Hey Phoenix, good to see you. Thanks for being in my broadcast. Um, oh, by the way, before I get too far in, this is a Facebook Live in case you're watching this on YouTube and I'll explain where you can find the replays at the end of the broadcast, so stay tuned for that. And I'm probably gonna post some links depending where I go in this conversation, just so you know ahead of time as well. So, I'm speaking mostly to women about this, but I'm sure there are men going through the same thing as well, because there are men who talk about how they're, you know, they're women after, just after their money, or um, they're being chased by the wrong ones, or something like that. There's, there's lots of different things that we tell ourselves, and you might tell yourself, when it comes to dating and relating and love, that are shooting yourselves in the foot. Excuse me, shooting yourself in the foot. Let me speak singular. So, to, prefer, to recap what I was saying earlier about what a lot of women are going through this, because I've heard from a lot of women, as it's my audience, about how all the good ones are taken, or there's no, there's no awake men. And I don't mean it from the point of view of the woke culture, I mean it from the point of view of personal growth, spiritual development, etc., etc., because there are more women that have been pursuing that path than there are men. Now, I'm, that's kind of like a little um, secret that has been kept for a long time, that all the men are going like, what are the good women? They're all busy doing personal growth, and men are catching up now. The problem with this perspective is it's going to keep perpetuating an old scenario. Literally, you're going to create the reality that you had before if you keep saying the things that have happened before as well. I don't want to go to, I'm just watching if I want to give you the solution right up front or just come back to it. I'm going to hold off a minute for a moment first. So, the biggest challenge people have, I believe, is believing they can have what they really want to have. As simplistic as that sounds, it's a massive hurdle, a stumbling block for people. I was talking to several people the last few weeks, and I hear the language. And, and to be honest, the reason why I hear it is because it's true for me as well. Just to be clear, I'm working through some of this stuff myself. That's why it's very present for me. So you can join me in this journey if you want. I'll, I'll, again, I'll put some links at the back end where you can reach out to me. But the thing is that we are... Um, that's it. We create our reality by what we tell ourselves. And it's, a, it's a spiritual principle, it's a powerful truth. And people are like, say what? You may think that your world is created outside of you and you just have to get put up with it and you have no control over it. That's actually not true. In fact, it's an illusion because it, it is also disowning responsibility. Yes, responsibility. When you start to realize that you, in fact, are the one who creates your reality, that you get to create the results you have, you're fully autonomous and in power, not like it's a massive effort, but the fact that your focus creates what happens then you can no longer play the victim of this and say, well, it's somebody else's fault. I've talked a lot over the last several months about um, being responsible for things, to, to deal with guilt and resentment and to be able to take care of the judgments. This is one of those pieces that is very pivotal about that. Because when you start to, excuse me, when you continue to hold the world accountable for your actions, saying that it's the world that's making it happen to you, those those for the ladies, those guys that treated you this way in the first place, they're the ones that deserted you or treated you badly or abused you or hurt you. If you keep affirming, that's what happens. Meaning that you only see men like that going forward, you'll never change. Hi hey, Gina, nice to see you in my broadcast. Love seeing all my friends in here. And that's a trap. When you start to look at your dating life through the lens of what happened before, this is a key by the way, 
then you keep repeating what happened before. That sounds, that sounds trite, but it's the truth. If you keep looking through the lens of what happened before, as in what you look to create in the future, it will keep cycling through the same experience you had in the past. And there's nobody else in control of that, just you, individually speaking. So if you're in an experience where your dating life has been reflecting back to you how you used to date, and if what happened before didn't work for you, and it's happening the same way again now, it ain't them except they're the ones that are illustrating to you what's going on. It's really you. Good to see you. Thank you for being so glad to be seen. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Phoenix. Don't drag yesterday into today. Perfect. This is the thing, though. We do that. We, are ten we tend to base our future choices on our past experience. And the thing is, we do hindsight backwards. We look at what happened in the past, and we paint the new future with that same brush. So what we do is start repeating the same thing again and again. And to, exactly, we are the common, yes, you are the common denominator, exactly. And that's the thing, is that it isn't about the other people. And to quote, to throw a couple of quotes at you, I've used a few times recently as well. Uh, one by George Santayana, which I quoted many times, it's in my book, I, I think, yeah, it's in my book. Um, with, yes, you, you've lived it in it, it and now, right, exactly, Gina. So, George Santayana says that um, those, those who fail to learn from the history are doomed to repeat it. It's actually used as a war allegory or a thing for countries when they do things right. But the thing is, it's true also, I believe, in relationship. Now, war and relationships aren't that different in some ways. But the recognition is that we carry this belief around in ourselves that what happened before will keep repeating itself. We actually self-hypnotize ourselves. Yes, self-hypnotize ourselves. Because we keep telling ourselves the same thing is going to happen that happened before because we have no necessary reference point that we can change it. And we still believe that we can't change. And now the thing is, that's true because you believe it, but it's not the truth you have to live with. So a lot of work with my clients is to really change the way they think. Um, it's funny, there's a, just total sidebar, it's talking about, talking about shifting a paradigm, well, it's not a sidebar really, but there's a, in American Sign Language, ASL, I, I learned a little bit about it many, many years ago, so I don't know much anymore, but one thing stuck in my head was the sign that the, the the ASL sign for paradigm shift because that's what I'm talking about here is a paradigm shift is this it's like changing your mind literally that's why I love that visual it's such a great visual sign about changing your paradigm completely the way around because until you're willing to shift it you're absolutely not going to have anything change in the future when and, and this is the thing this is what this is one of my pet peeves my big frustrations is when people and I'm going to use general for both go on dating apps looking to meet somebody or go to a dating service or a matchmaker or a dating site, having them trying to find them the perfect date. And for some reason, you don't get what you want. It isn't about them not delivering. It's about you not receiving. That's a big one, by the way. It's not about them delivering. It's about you not receiving. Because what's happening is you're being, um, well, you're settling and you're being in a place that doesn't believe a change is possible. Even if you work with me, and I, I do have a few room for a few, room for a few clients, I will not hold you to your old paradigm. In fact, I'll hold you to a new standard that you can start believing in because until you believe in it, it won't change. And I can't make it change for you. <laughs> Thank you, Lise. Dating apps are the armpit of humanity right now. I'm not sure I'd exactly correlate them that, um, but there's certainly interesting research in my world. <laughs> Thank you, Finks. That was great. I love that way of framing it. So that's one quote. And the other part, which is really the, the simplistic part, which is the definition of insanity, which I've used before from quoted, attributed to um, Albert Einstein, is if you do the same thing again and again, expecting a different result. That's the definition of insanity. And if you're not willing to change your inner self-talk and you wonder why your dates aren't getting any better, this is what you're doing. You're, not, you're being basically, uns I won't say insane, you're being unsane. Sanity would be looking at the fact you're getting the same results you did before, so you're doing something again and again the same way. What do I need to change? That's conscious, that's sanity, that's the way to do things. If, you don't be, if you're not willing to look at your own life, your own experience, and your own choices to see where maybe you can change something to change your past history to be something different in the future, until you're willing to do that, you're living in an insane world. And I'm not talking about the world out there, I'm talking about the world in here. This is where things can change. That's why I was talking about how it's might, if you believe things are getting better or getting worse, because the reality 
your creative yourself is based upon what you put your th thoughts into. If you believe it's going to get better, it will get better. And I know it sounds, may sound, if, you, if you're someone who keeps things, seeing things getting worse, you may not believe that's possible. But I'm here to tell you, when you, it's almost like when you think better, things get better. It's like when you, um, no, that's, no, that's not the right metaphor. Sorry, it was a metaphor trying to come in, it wasn't accurate, so I'm leaving it alone. So the recognition I want to give you, the realization I hope you get, the aha that hopefully you'll see, is that you have control of your choice. You have control of what happens. You have control over the reality that you actually manifest, that you bring in, that you um, attract. And it starts with you having a clear understanding that you do have the choice first. Because the first thing is awareness. I've talked about this many times before in my talks. That in everything I talk about, in a lot of, about this understanding is the first thing is to become aware. <laughs> yes, Gina. Yeah, Phoenix is done with those. She has, she's got, she's got, she's grown beyond the dating apps, thankfully, which is a good thing. So I want to get all my clients to, go, to grow beyond the dating apps. So just to be transparent. So the recognition about how we do our work is that it's an inside job. When you change what's inside, the outside world changes. So you're not a victim to what the world out there does to you. You're actually a victim to yourself. If you're not willing to take responsibility, you're not willing to look at yourself and say, maybe I can change some things. Maybe I've got some help. I can see the world through different eyes. If you're not willing to do that, then yes, you will be a victim, but not to the world. You'll be a victim to your own lack of willing to, willingness to change. So my encouragement is you, and my invitation to you is to, first of all, become aware of what you're thinking for yourself and keeping things in the same place. Secondly, if that's the case and it's not working for you, are you willing to change it? And thirdly, make some changes. Now, that sounds very simple, I know. In my work with my clients, this takes a little bit of time. That's why a lot of time we work with my clients, we do work together for a period of time because it's a, it's a um, rewiring of the belief systems. Now, the challenge with that is a lot of times those beliefs aren't even on the surface. So what happens is you get to, um, what's that saying that Phoenix? So you're grateful. The moment you realize you weren't gonna meet your life partner on dating at the magic started to flow. Beautiful. Now, let me just say one thing. It's possible, it's possible you can meet that person on the dating app if you do it right. But if you're doing the dating app without considering changing how you're doing things internally, that ain't gonna happen. So yes, I'm glad Phoenix that you got, you, ha you have manifested the relationship of your dreams without the dating app. But the reality is, if you're really clear about what you want, it's almost irrelevant where you put your attention because it will show up through whatever avenue you use. Whereas dating apps, social media, clubbing, going to events, seeing trainers, etc., etc. It's, it's like those are actually the um, they're the methods, not the focus. But when you focus on what you really want, and you know that, and you start to change, which again starts with awareness first, and then willingness to change, and then making the change then you can have what you want. That sounds so simple. But if it was that simple, we'd all be doing it, which is the thing. Yes, exactly, if it's your truth. Yeah, you get clear what you're calling in. But this is the thing. Based upon results, and this is what I'm saying, look at your own life. Because if you look at your own life and the results, particularly in the area of relationship, because that's my focus, but I, was, I can open other areas too, because it's the same idea, same structure. If you look at your life and look at things and say they're not where I want them to be, then something is out of alignment internally. Now, it may be so buried that it's gonna take a while to dig it up. That's the challenge with this work, as I said, is that there are surface beliefs that come up right away and you can clear those out. But the things, if you're still getting the same results that aren't changing, you're not getting what you want, it's likely that what's happening is you've got deep beliefs that haven't come up yet. So that excavation <laughs> may require some coaching, some support, some assistance. That's what I do in my work. So you can do this yourself. You can start, you can get a journal, start working through it, writing things out, you can do that yourself. There are books out there that can help you too. I personally recommend working with a coach or somebody who knows these sort of things, which is what I bring to the table, so you can get what you need to get where you want to go. It does start inside of you. You have the power, you have the authority, but if you've been defaulting to what's not working, you're out of control with it. Yes, exactly, Gina. So when you change what's inside, the outside world changes. Exactly. Yes. And that's another thing, by the way. Thank you, Phoenix. You weren't loving yourself before. That's the other part of it. Yes. Thank you, you put it perfectly. So you definitely weren't loving yourself before and that was blocking you from receiving. And that is the fundamental truth as well. It's not just, let me just change my thinking. It's also changing how you relate to your heart. Because if you don't feel you deserve it, if you don't feel loving to yourself, how are you gonna let that love in? It's like I'm putting up a concrete wall around it. And many of my clients started that way with a concrete wall around their heart. 
and a bulletproof shield around their head. It wasn't very attractive, <laughs> to say the least. But what I, I promised to deliver to my clients is a lot of love and support so they can open up their own heart and love themselves and they can crack open that shell and start to love themselves and also learn to retrain the programming, the, the choices and the beliefs so what they really want can show up and it will align to their beliefs because their beliefs will shift to support that new desire, dream and vision. As I said, this is not just about relationships, it applies to every area of life, but relationship especially is where it starts for me. That's why my work is in this area. So check in with yourself and notice the results you're creating because in a way what you can say is that the life you've created, the results you have in your life, your partial relationships especially, are the evidence of what you've been believing. That might be a, ooh, that might be an ouch feeling from some of you watching this. But if it is feeling that way, that's a good sign because it means you want to change. If you wince when you look back at that and go, oh, I'm responsible for that, and you start to feel a bit uncomfortable, that's a good sign. Because it's the first step to changing because you're becoming aware. I do recommend getting aware first because otherwise nothing changes. It's a potent place I know and it's what I'm passionate about. So we'll put some links in the comments for you to check out because I'll reach out, you can get support from me that way. Um, or you know there's gonna be three in the comments right off the bat. Um, because this is vital for you to get this place if you really wanna get where you wanna go. So if this is an area you're stuck with and you wanna get some help, here's some things that will help you. First of all, um, actually which order would I put them in? Well, first of all, conversation with me. <laughs> if this is resonating for you and you wanna get some deeper help, reach out for a complimentary chat, a conversation with me where we can talk and I can clarify what may be out of alignment. You can tell me what's going on. I can give you some tips some guidance and also an invitation to work with me if, it find, if, we, if, we, if we find alignment, because I don't work with everybody, just those I feel like we can work together on. Secondly, um, I'll put a link in the comments for my self-love meditation because as Phoenix so well put it, that until she was loving herself, she was being blocking from receiving and so many people do that. Loving yourself is where you start opening up the, the lens to attract what you want. The thing about that is when you love yourself, you're not just blindly receiving. You're receiving with clarity, you're receiving with respect for yourself, and you're receiving with a standard that's elevated. So self-love is a vital key for that. So I'll have the self-love meditation to be in the comments too. And thirdly, because some of the ladies out there want to just jump in and start working on this course, my, my signature, pro my signature, try it in English, my signature program <laughs> is called Attract the Man You Want. And funny enough, that's what it does. So that'll be in the comments too, so you can check it out. It's an online course, you can do it yourself, or you can have coaching with me at the same time. Um, those three things will be in the comments for you to get the help you need. But again, as I said at the beginning, what is it you're believing and what is it you're seeing as a result from your beliefs? Because that's the guiding point to see where you're out of alignment. When you know what is on, out of alignment, you can start making a move. And yes, it does require having a um, willingness to face the, the darkness of what happened in the past, perhaps. But when you do, you can make some changes. Burying your past, covering it up, hiding it from yourself is not the solution. In fact, all that does is make it go unconscious. You don't even think about it, you keep repeating it. If you're fed up with repeating the same old thing and it's time to change, it's time we talked. How does this make sense to you? This, this, I'm glad, thanks to Gina and Phoenix for watching this, there was some definite inputs. I'm glad it was on track. So thank you for the input and for keeping me on track. I appreciate that. Um, and again, I'll put the links in the comments when I sign off, those three links so you can check them out for yourself. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily chat, <laughs> my daily um, informative, inspirational chat that I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook. So Facebook Live right here on facebook.com slash Barry Selby is my personal page. You can follow me there if you want to watch me live. If you want to watch the replays, because I have 903 plus this one, replays out there, 904 now. You can find them on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Although, to be honest, Facebook doesn't save all of them visually. That gets them in the background somewhere, which is one grateful I have a backup on YouTube. No, I yeah, so another thing about YouTube, Facebook, I was going to go there. So on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, so youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, easy to find. You can subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. And all of my broadcasts are there from newest to oldest. And you can sort through keywords, search for phrases, look at titles and go, that speaks to you and watch whatever you want. Or you could binge watch like you're on Netflix and it's not quite the same thing. <laughs> Again, you have the power to change your destiny, to change your future, to change your intention around relationship, around life. But you've got to be willing to become aware of what didn't work in the past first. You've got to be willing to make a choice and you've got to be willing to make the, make the focus going on. Hi, dear. Thanks for watching my broadcast. Um, 
Oh, you were popping up on Mary, Mary Smith's page. Yes, I was on there commenting about this. Uh, what we're looking for. Frustration with Facebook withdrawing the dual broadcast. That was the thing that was, was uh, bugging me. I was trying to say anything about it. So just as a quick side note, totally off topic, except about Facebook Live. If you do dual Facebook Live broadcast on your mobile phone, that's going away. If it hasn't already gone away. It went away for me about two weeks ago. But Facebook's taking that off mobile devices. In fact, you'll only be able to do dual Facebook Lives with somebody else using an external app on your desktop. I th actually not. I think you can do it on your, maybe I do it on your mobile phone too. I'm not sure about that. So thank you, dear. I'm glad you liked my message. I've got 905 of them, 904 of them out there now. So thanks for watching. And if you want to get any help, I'll put the links in the comments. As I mentioned, if you did watch from the beginning, great. If you didn't, please watch from the beginning of the broadcast. Um, anyway, I'm going to sign up before I get too into the, the politics of Facebook. <laughs> thank you for watching my broadcast. As always, I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time as, as usual. Um, you've got the, you'll have the links in the comments when I sign off and you've got the place you can watch my replays. And um, yeah, I didn't. I saw it too. In fact, Mari, Mari tagged me in that one, so I saw the post. That's what drig, like, triggered me, and I just posted in one of the groups I belong to, which some of these ladies are in the group with me, um, which is a Facebook Live group. And I just posted and said, "He, just so you know, Facebook Live dual broadcast is going away." Anyway, enough of that. Signing off. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me as always. As a reminder, to take care of yourself. Well, we'll see. They're they're, they're making mistakes, <laughs> but thank you, Adair. I appreciate the input. Um, if you want to chat offline, message me. I definitely have some thoughts myself. I appreciate you being with me on this broadcast. Thanks for watching, as always. I will be back again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I look forward to seeing you again then. And as always, as a reminder, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.